Dear Journal, among the greatest gifts a community can give itself are a world-class concert hall, a fine symphony orchestra, and a brilliant conductor. The Gulf Coast has all three. This uniquely purple palace behind me, the Van Wezel, is the hall. The Florida West Coast Symphony, the orchestra, and the conductor would like you to meet him. These hands harness the power of a great orchestra. Unlock a composer's vision. Spellbind an audience. They are the hands of Maestro Leif Bialen. I think the chemistry is the most important factor in the success of, of, of a conductor in an orchestra. Chemistry with the musicians, chemistry with the community, I think, is equally important. Two, ah. For 10 years, he has been creating that chemistry as artistic director of the Florida West Coast Symphony in Sarasota. An orchestra is like, uh, like riding a horse. And when you ride a horse, it's a big animal. It's a powerful animal, it has a mind of its own. If you want to jump over a fence, you can't force the horse to do it. You have to create an atmosphere where the horse wants to do it and feels confident in doing it. And that's what a conductor does. Play them as, as accents, so it has more of a, like sparks in the fire field. A decade in any profession is a respectable reign, but he knows that it's but a fraction of the time his predecessor, Paul yeah. Wolf, spent on this podium. Very, very marcato. I think during that time we've managed to capitalize on all of the great work that Paul did during his long tenure, over 30 years. One thing they haven't lost from the days of Paul Wolf, and that is the, the joy of music making that uh, was a highlight of, of, of his tenure. Is it Leaf, Leif, or Life? <laughs> You're right. Good. All Thank three you. is right. Uh, they say Leaf here. Uh, we were discussing earlier, they, they do say Leif, and especially in Sweden. And, and some Norwegians say Leif. My grandparents always called me Leif. And uh, so Lachayim. Leif, or Leif, has had quite a life. He grew up in Flint, Michigan, a Midwestern kid, exposed to classical music at an early age and through an unlikely source. When I was about four years old, I, we started watching television, and it was the Huntley Brinkley Report signature music, as I found out later, was the Scherzo of the Ninth Symphony of Beethoven, and I just loved it, and I would wait and listen. And on Fridays, they would run the whole credits, and it would be four minutes almost of, uh, of Beethoven's Scherzo, and I just couldn't get the music out of my head. My mother liked David Brinkley, but I loved Beethoven. As he grew, so did his love for the classics. He graduated from the University of Michigan with a master's degree in music and began his career as professor of music at Yale. I also got an education degree because my father was convinced I would never make it as a professional musician, so I had to teach. His resume already is impressive. Assistant conductor of the San Francisco Symphony, cover conductor for the New York Philharmonic. In 1988, selected by maestro Leonard Bernstein to conduct the Chicago Symphony Orchestra as part of the American Conductors Program. Came to Sarasota from Connecticut's Waterbury Symphony Orchestra, where he still maintains maestro status. An orchestra and a conductor, it's like a marriage. And when you first come to an orchestra, it's like a blind date. And there's all the strange vibe that, that goes along with a blind date, trying to psych out each other and figure out each other. My initial visit with the Florida West Coast Symphony was an audition for this job, and it, the blind date went pretty well. And we liked each other very much. His melodic spouse is always with him, playing in his head, driving him to perfection, forcing him to hunt for makeshift batons. <laughs> yeah, uh, pencils often work. Uh, straws from uh, the hobnob when I go out and have chili dog. Pretty much anything, chopsticks, very good. Anything can be a baton.
Leif can play almost all orchestral instruments, at least badly, he confesses, but his profound understanding of music allows him to fluently speak the language of each instrument to each musician. There's a way of putting words together which will immediately elicit a reaction from a violinist, but you could say the same thing to a horn player and they go, what? So you learn this special jargon for every instrument so that you can be extremely efficient and communicate your ideas quickly and persuasively to all the members of the orchestra. And then it, like, like at the end of the phrase, go up in smoke like a genie and just go, come away. But it should be very, very boing boing. Well, I know, we'll do it again, we'll see. I know it went up in smoke in many other ways that time. Many conductors will uh, uh, want to really impose a, a, a very strict style uh, within rehearsals or within uh, the music making itself. And Leif has always treated us as colleagues. And in a way, he has uh, turned the experience into a large version of, of chamber music, which is what I think we all strive for as, as musicians. And one, two, three. A disarming quality that has earned him respect from artistic colleagues. Don't hurry too much, Kate. Yeah. He's very much, oh, um, how can I say, more a partner than the boss, you know. And he knows how to treat people and bring out the best in them. A fan of the underdog, Leif's programs often intersperse neglected works with the more popular classics. You try and create programs that, like a good meal, you know, that has different tastes that play off one another well. Suddenly you have a palate cleanser and then you have the main course. Then you have something with a lot of sauce or something very rich like the Rachmaninoff Symphony. And you put them together in a pleasing way that will somehow add insight and energy each piece to the other in, in, in a group. So the Midwestern kid, inspired by a news program's theme music, invites us to dine on his musical meals, savor them, and please, come back for more.